floss tube. It's Jerry Caudell, the Yankee Creek Stitcher, back for floss tube number 13. It is Thursday, January 17th of 2019. Thanks for coming back if you're returning and welcome all my new visitors and hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button. Um, I'm hoping to do another giveaway with 1500 subscribers and I'm over 1200 so we're getting there. Um, yes, I do have more hair than what I had before so we'll, we'll see how this goes with longer hair. <laughs> Um, giveaway winner. We have a giveaway winner, uh, for the Beehives Matter chart. There was a couple people asked, um, who the designer was. I forgot to mention that last week. It is the Nebby Needle. I had stitched and finished this chart and I actually got a finishing piece, um, from Hobby Lobby today. So hopefully next week I'll have that put together. Um, so my winner, I had lots of comments this week and a lot of reds were mentioned. Um, and my winner was Willow Coulter. I used the random comment picker on the internet. Um, Willow Coulter, uh, email me at yankeecreekstitch at gmail.com. Um, and her favorite color was DMC's uh, 321 which is a beautiful red. That's one of my favorites as well. Um, but yeah, w reds were overwhelming favorite with everyone. Okay. So last week I was hoping for, you know, a nice big snowstorm. Mm. We only got about an inch of snow here. Most of it went north of us. Um, I'll insert a pic of our backyard. of our snow it I mean it did cover the ground but and it was nice and pretty and white but it didn't last that long so um we have another chance this weekend not huge for snow but it's going to get really really cold like highs in the 20s so it's it's early yet for good snows here so I'm still crossing my fingers for a good snow in but I did get lots of stitching in so that's <laughs> that's what matters um and I finished my hutch. I'm super excited about it. It turned out beautiful. Um, it was a, you know, just a generic brown color. Um, and then I painted it in chalk paint. Um, it's a cream color. I can't remember the name, of, the exact name of the color. It was a Rust-Oleum uh, color, um, but it turned out great. I learned a few lessons. Um, <laughs> don't, put so many layers of chalk paint on in some areas I put in three layers of chalk on and then I distressed it. Um, and don't distress in your home with a sander. Not a great idea. So it was a learning lesson, but it turned out great. All was well <clears throat> and it was definitely worth it. So I'll insert some pics here. I tried to throw in just a few little pieces to give you some dimension of it. It's about seven and a half feet tall, um, about four and a half foot wide and about 28 inches deep. So it is a nice size hutch and it was all handmade. It's not from, you know, a furniture store and you know, where you're going to see replicas of it. Someone had ha handmade this. I don't know if somebody's wife said, Hey, I need a hutch put one together for me. I don't know. It, it's kind of rough and it wasn't, you know, really perfectly square and it kind of drove my husband nuts <laughs> on getting everything level when we put it back together. But I love it. It's, um, I told him all the quirkiness of it gives it character and I love it. Um, I'm thrilled with how it turned out. Um, we put some holes in the back of each level so I can, you know, put some 
anything that I want to have, um, like some candles or anything plugged in. So I can't wait. Right now I have all Christmas stuff out. So I tried to just throw some stuff up, up there that wasn't Christmas related. Uh, but I loved it. It turned out great. I already have um, three or four more pieces in my home that I want to chalk paint and distress because I was intimidated by it. But now that I, after I did that, I'm like, I love it. I love the finish of it. I love the look of it. And I'm anxious to get some more going. So maybe when it warms up, um, it's too cold right now and I'm not going to do it in my home again. <laughs> um, let's see. What else did I do? I organized my fancy floss. I have seen others. I wasn't really sure right now they were, or before now, they were tossed into an organizing uh, tray drawer um just in some plastic bags uh, you know victorian mottos in a bag and wig star works in a bag um but a lot of them have them stored on the big rings and that's what i did i did it by color um you know you can do it by the thread dyer um but i did it by color um because I really like that. Because if it calls for a red, I want to pull out all my reds. I don't want to have to go to Victorian Model reds and then color and cotton reds and Wigs Dye Works reds. So I put reds together. I put browns together. I put grays together. Um, and I'm loving it. Uh, I did have a new start this week. And so I was, I pulled out. I knew I wanted some reds and some browns. And so I picked those out and loved it. Um, so this is what I did. I had some... I actually thrifted these. Um, my mom had these big three inch ring uh, binder rings at our store that wasn't being used. So I'm like, I can put those to use. So I grabbed them. And like I said, I have Victorian Motto. There's Color and Cotton. There's Weeks Dye Works. They're all on this ring, but it's all my reds. And I, lo I love being able just to see all of that together. I just think it's beautiful, but I got my reds and this is some browns in uh, or the blacks and browns. And you know, some of them, it's hard. It, it'll, it'll look like a green and then you put, put it with the greens and like, oh, nope, that's a brown. And then you put it with a brown and like, eh, it's kind of more green. So some of them are kind of back and forth, but that's okay. Um, I just love pulling it out and laying them however I want to. Um, so I love that. I had ordered, only had a few initially. So I had ordered some more off Amazon and got them all in yesterday. So they're all on, on the rings and I love it. That's how I do the fancy floss. The DMCs, I do abominate and keep them in some, a uh, couple of the plastic containers that I can go through. Um, so I got that done this week. Um, I had sent my sewing machine, my Bernina and my, and the serger that I had just got from my mom. I got both of them from my mom. I've had the sewing machine for, I don't know, 10 or 15 years and it need, just needed to be cleaned up, maintenance. And I had just gotten her serger from her last week. So I sent that out to get cleaned up as well. And I just picked those up today. So, ah, I'll be able to search some, search my linen. I, I cut a piece of linen yesterday and, and went to my sewing machine to zigzag the edges and didn't have it. So I've got them back, so I'll get that done too. Um, and a comment um, that I had someone ask last week um, was Peggy Gavin. She had asked where my floss tube name had come from, uh, Yankee Creek Stitcher. Uh, I, I don't, I guess I'd, I had never explained that. Um, we live on a family farm. My mom and dad own about, I don't know, 160 acres or so. And then my aunt and uncle live um, on the same property. It's kind of the whole whole corner of land here. It's about 350 acres total. And there is a creek that kind of runs right between them. And it is called Yankee Creek. So when trying to think of a floss tube channel name, um, I thought that was pretty unique, and so that is where my floss tube name came from. Yankee Creek Stitcher is from the creek that runs through our farm. 
Okay, um, some, I do have a couple of shout outs. Uh, Susie Reno, I had, I had heard a few floss tubes mention her. Um, and I, I guess it had just popped up um, in a, you know, to watch. And when I was watching some floss tubes, so I watched it. Oh, wow. Um, she has beautiful cross stitch pieces, but she also does quilting and my goodness, beautiful, beautiful projects all around. Um, she had showed some, well, at least one gift that she had made, um, for Teresa Vinette, the kitten stitcher. Uh, it's a fabric star. You'll have to watch her video to, to understand how it's put, but it's stars put together and it makes a big cube of a star and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, she did say the Indigo Junction has that pattern and I'm definitely looking at that up because it was beautiful. Um, something that I'm really interested in doing for next Christmas. Um, and another one is Lost in Floss. Uh, Leanne and Barb. I believe there's more to them than I know right now. I've watched one of their floss tubes. Um, I think they have some type of business. I'm not sure. I apologize. A lot of you out there may already know their history and everything, but I'm watching their first floss, watching their last floss tube, the first one for me, um, they have lots of the exact same charts um, that I am stitching or that are in my stash. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have that one. Oh my gosh, I have that one. So we have lots of similar tastes and I loved watching those two. Um, their finishes and their stitching is beautiful. Okay, stash enhancements. I did have a few. I had only one new purchase in this new year. Um, I was, you know, trying to calm down uh, purchasing charts for my stash. Uh, but I was going to continue my floss clubs. So I did get my Victorian Motto Floss Club. Um, I'm going to quickly show them. I don't want to assume that everyone out there has seen them. I know everyone uh, that does floss tubes shares the colors that they get. But sometimes they don't because they assume everyone has seen them. But... Um, this is a Vic, uh, Victoria Motto Special Taupe. It's beautiful off-white color. Uh, Rose Hips. I think this was my favorite from the bunch. It's a variegated orange. Orange is gorgeous. Mysterious Sky. Beautiful blue. Not a whole lot of variegation in that one. Um, Primitive Prairie. That's another orange. Not a lot of variegation in that one. And purple puzzle. That is a gorgeous purple. I love purple. I don't stitch with it a lot, but I love purples. I also got uh, Color and Cottons. Uh, fabric of the month and it is I changed it I was signed up for I think the 28 to 32 count and I changed for this month to the 32 to 40 count I, I have realized I love stitching on the 36 count fabrics and that's my go-to and this one is 36 count marvelous it's a beautiful it's really more purple. It's kind of purplish pink, but more purple. But not, you know, an overwhelming bright purple. Um, I had considered it for something. I, I started stitching this past week that I'll share with you in a bit. I can, had considered it for that, but ended up going with a different route with it. Um, I did sign up for... Um, Oh my gosh, Trisha <laughs> with three off threads. Um, she has a floss club as well. Um, and with her, you can choose whether you get uh, general arts, weeks. Oh goodness. Uh, I think she, she has uh, a couple of different, maybe silks, 
that she offers as well. Um, I joined the Weeks Club and I'm very, I love the Weeks. For some reason, I think their colors, I don't know, more saturated or something. Um, you only get five yards, um, but I just think their colors are beautiful. Um, these are some golds and yellows. couple of greens, a flatfish and garrison green. Mm, galvanized, it's a beautiful gray. Another purple grape ice. And grape vine, a brown, brownish with some green lighting is horrible it is a cloudy dreary day here but it's more of a brown almost a black uh, a beautiful red garnet and foliage and this is the brightest one I, I haven't stitched a lot with bright fiber colors and this one's called fiesta reds orange yellows it's really pretty. It would probably look really good with the um, um, Autumn Splendor chart that I'm stitching. Um, that's one of my whips. <laughs> okay, um, and I also, oh, a freebie that I got was uh, Pam and Steph. They promote, have a couple promotions each week, each week um, and one of them is with Twin Peak Primitives. They're from the UK and Pam and Steph are visiting the UK in their shop. Um, I didn't get the chart that they were promoting this week, but I got a different one. Um, it's, it's a freebie, sh freebie chart. It's mouse of the house. And it is just such a cute little mouse and he's holding an acorn sitting on a pumpkin. These are all in, uh, the pumpkin of course is in orange and yellows. I just didn't print it out in color, but I just thought that was so cute. And it's a freebie. So, jump on their website. They had mm, five or six freebies on there. Um, and the one purchase I made this month, um, I have really restrained myself. And because um, there has been so many charts that is on my, you know, high up on my wish list and have been on sale or... Um, have been out of stock on 123 Stitch and I get their emails and hey, it's back in stock. And I'm like, oh, I resisted pulling the trigger. Um, but I couldn't resist on this. Um, Misty Purcell had mentioned this on her last floss tube and did a brief flip through on it and I fell in love with it. Um, looked it up on Amazon, it was a great price. Um, so I went ahead and was like, okay, this is going to be my one purchase this month. It is the Magic of Christmas book. It's French. It's French stitching. And, but the charts are just so, and I will not flip through all of this, but I will show you quickly just some of my favorite, or well, not favorites, but when you see it, it's, I just think that is so adorable. Little kids on the sled, just, I just think they're gorgeous. And to stitch those up into little ornaments, oh my gosh, I just, and even some of the larger ones, um, there was a large one. And you also get an entire alphabet. Um, little kids, Christmas morning with the presents. Oh goodness, adorable! I, 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 I don't think there's a chart that I don't like. <laughs> so. Um, 
I'm definitely adding this to some of my starts from this year. But I love it. It is on Amazon. Um, the Magic of Christmas in Cross Stitch. Or to Cross Stitch. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't too bad. One purchase for the month. So, and it was under my $25 limit. So, I'm happy with that. So, I did have um, a whip. It was. I worked on Cardinal Noel. I made quite a bit of progress. I filled in all the white on the border and the candy canes and started my in. Um, all of the letters did not have the, I mean, all parts of the letters didn't have the red going through there. I've modified the in a little bit where I'm going to be putting the red dots in there. I hope it turns out okay. I modified the chart just a tad, but I think it'll look okay. But this is just stitching right up. I'm <clears throat> really happy with that and its progress. I probably would have finished it if I didn't get distracted with my other whip. Well, <laughs> it was a whip and a finish last week. Um, I had decided that, um, there's several people that I want to stitch ornaments for for Christmas next year. And I figured it would be easier if I just picked one chart and stitch it, stitch it for each of them. So I did stitch this for one person last year, my great aunt. And I showed you the finish of it. It's uh, the Little House Needlework Season's Greetings. So I did stitch it again. Um, and I'm using the same colors that I had stitched it previously. And I, I'm not doing the border like I did before. I didn't do the border, but it stitches up into a great little ornament. So the only thing, I'm, I've ordered some charms, the, a 2019 charm. Instead of stitching the year in there, I'm just going to attach that charm just to add a little bit more to it. So those are on the way. So one under my belt. I think I'm stitching eight of these this year. So... Um, it takes me about six hours to, to stitch one of these, so that's not bad. I should be able to get those out in plenty of time for Christmas next year. Hopefully early so that I can get them wrapped and done early in the year. Okay, and then I did have a start um, last night. I had gotten this chart. For some reason, I was in the mood to stitch something for Valentine's Day. Um, oh, I do have a wall. I have to show share the wall hanging later. Um, this was a freebie from oops, the Primitive Hair. And when I went back to try to find this... <laughs> on their website. I could not find it. It's from 2011. It was a freebie that I got several months ago, probably at least six or eight months ago. So I don't know if after so long they take them off the website because I'm like, I know I got this off their website because I also got um, Yule and Yule still up. This one is not still up. It's from 2011, but it's Be Mine. Um, I had gotten um, a fat quarter of fabric from Julie Evans, the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Um, she was doing a de-stash on YouTube and I snagged this fabric. Like I said, it was 18 by 27 fiberlicious. Mm. Hold on a second. Let me grab the bag. Okay. It was fiberlicious mud, uh, chocolate mudslide. Um, like I said, it was a 17, sorry, 17 by 26, uh, piece of fabric. Um, so a pink and brown. And yesterday I was in the mood. I'm like, I want to stitch something for Valentine's day. I don't, I'm not, I've said before, I'm not big on stitching spring items. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day, maybe now that I have my hutch. I'll want to fill it with spring things. Um, so, but I do have some Valentine decorations. Um, so I wanted to do a Valentine stitching. And I have several more 
um, Kathy Hopperman with Hands On Design. She does one every year for her, her wedding anniversaries on Valentine's Day. So she does a special freebie stitch for Valentine's Day every year. And I went to her website and got those for the past several years. Um, so between those and this one that I'm such a nail, um, I should have plenty of, I want to do little ornaments to put on a tree. Uh, so this Fiberlicious, like I said, was, is pinks and browns. And with this chart, this was a 28 count fabric. And I decided to do um, one over one stitching for this. And I stitched on this about three hours last night and got this far. And I am thrilled with how it is turning out. It should finish at a three by four size. Um, and I was kind of scared of stitching one over one because I've not stitched anything one over one yet. But oh my gosh, I love it. I absolutely love it. It is so beautiful. Um, the colors I am using is Victorian Motto's Everlasting Carnation. That's the pink I'm using. I haven't started using that yet on the chart. That's going to be the words that be mine. And the brown that I'm using is General Arts with Smoke. And the variegation in that is just beautiful. And it honestly matches... <laughs> the fabric so well in some places it is very difficult in some areas to keep track of where I'm stitching since I'm doing it one over one but I am thrilled with this um this is my plans to be stitching on this evening I love it um I can't wait to see how this how it turns out on this fabric so I plan on um, since it's a, it is a large piece and I'm not sure what else I would use it for. So I thought that would be great to use it um, for my Valentine ornament stitching. So that's my intentions. Um, let's see here. I think this one's going to be short and sweet this week. Um, so I, my only plans until my next floss tube is stitch, stitch, and stitch. <laughs> um it's, it's, you know, turning cold. It's January here in Southern Indiana. So it's going to be cold. And all I want to do is get under my nice warm blanket on my comfy couch with all my stitchy stuff and stitch. Um, I'm going to count how many hours I was able to stitch this weekend. It was, it was several. Um, I got lots done on the Cardinal Noel. Um, we might be taking down a Christmas tree this week. My husband wants to get rid of the 12 foot one in the living room. Like it would be nice just to have the living room back. So we may do that. We'll see how it goes. So I think that's all I have for you this week. Um, we will catch up next week. Until then, have a great week and hope you get lots of stitching time in.